Hello everyone and welcome to a new span of lecture in the topic of non ST elevation confined syndrome. And today we are speaking about a strange term that doesn't look familiar to many of us and it was not looking very familiar to me, which is resting new wave inversion in the context of non ST elevation and confined syndrome. In this lecture we are going to learn how to detect resting new wave inversion and what is its clinical significance in patient presenting with chest pain because it is not very familiar to us but we need to recognize this important finding in ECG. First of all, let's remind ourselves with the lectures of ECG interpretation. What's meant by U wave? U wave, of course, is a wave following the T wave, which is a small, low amplitude wave. Sometimes it appears and sometimes it doesn't appear in the ECG. That's why it is not very famous, but of course, all of us need to know that there is something called the U wave after the T wave that sometimes appears in the ECG. So what's the cause of this wave? It has many explanations like delayed vaporization of protein fibers, prolonged repolarization in the mid-myocardial cells or sometimes we call them M cells, or after potentials resulting from mechanical force in the ventricular wall. What are the criteria for the volume wave? Usually it goes in the same direction that U wave, so T wave positive, U wave could be positive, T wave inverted, U wave could be inverted. It is inversely proportional to the heart rate, so it goes bigger as the heart rate is slower, and so it becomes more visible when the heart rate is, example, less than 65 feet per minute. Usually, its voltage is less than a quarter of the T wave, and its maximum amplitude is 1 to 2 millimeter. Let's see this ECG here. We can see here an example of U wave following the T wave. This is normal finding. But of course, U waves are described as being prominent if they are more than 2 mm or more than a quarter of the T wave amplitude, like in case of bradycardia, severe hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, hypothermia, raised intracranial pressure, LDH, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, drugs, of course, like drugs in class 1a, class 1c, and theorhythmics. So many of the conditions causing prominent U wave are the same conditions that cause long QT. That's why in long QT interval you can see that the patient has prominent U wave. And be careful when you calculate the QT interval in this case in order to calculate the corrected QT interval. If the U wave is visible and clearly separated from the T wave, you should not include it in the QT interval calculation. The 2020 EC guidelines for non ST elevation acute current syndrome have emphasized the importance of resting U wave inversion and so they put criteria for them. It described them as discrete negative deflection in the TP segment with no initial U wave, positive deflection, meaning that the U wave should be entirely negative, not obscured by fusion with the terminal T wave or the following T wave. So we are speaking about distinct U wave which is completely negative and separated from the preceding T wave and the following U wave. So I clearly see inverted U wave. It usually occurs in lead 1, AVL, V4, V5, V6. We are speaking about the lateral leads, and it usually indicates severe stenosis of the left main or LED with positive predictive value of 92%. Here in this ACG, we can see here that there is evidence of resting U wave inversion, which are clearly completely negative U wave distinct from the D wave and from the P wave. So we have clear evidence of resting U wave inversion. Here in this ECG as well, we can see here that the patients having resting U wave inversion, they are of course shallow U wave, but as they are less than 2 mm, but they are clearly inverted U wave appearing in the infralateral bleed. So we are speaking here again about resting U wave inversion. So resting U wave inversion can be considered as an early sign of myocardial ischemia and evolving function. It may occur sometimes in prismatal angina, which is the vagospastic angina, and it usually signifies severe stenosis, LED, or left main. So usually it is restricted to the lateral leads, and sometimes it makes sense to the inferior leads. So the presence of this sign in ECG in a patient with non-ST helps you to select invasive coronary angio as the next step, rather than non-invasive imaging if your clinical suspicion, of course, for myocardial ischemia is high. So I'm speaking about a patient presenting with typical chest pain, and with him having this finding and this clearly distinct finding, not just a query for resting new inversion, no, there is a clear evidence of resting new inversion as we described before in the criteria. At that time, you can select that based on your clinical sense and based on the ECG, you can go for coronary angiography for your vascularization. 
what are the other causes of EOA inversion in order to be oriented with? Because sometimes it is caused by other pathologies or other diseases rather than myocardial ischemia. LV dysfunction can cause it hypertension, valvular heart disease, cardiomyopathy, congenital heart disease, and hyperthyroidism. So sometimes you may find that the cry is normal and echo may show you other pathologies that may cause resting U wave inversion. So now at the end of this very short lecture, but of course it's very important, we understood how to diagnose resting U wave inversion and what is the criteria and what is the clinical significance of this finding, which is not common to be seen, but is very significant in patient presenting with typical chest pain. And our take home message today in patient presenting with chest pain Pay attention to negative deflection in the ACG following T wave, as it may signify critical ischemia, especially as the T waves are appearing positive, but they are followed by small, sharp negative deflection. So rather than just assuming that the patient is having normal ECG, pay attention that he may have an abnormality that may change your management plan. Thank you very much for your watching.